what is up guys this is pinzo back with another video today and what i have for you guys is well first of all a return to youtube content i've for about the past week kind of just been throwing up twitch vods and i really want to get you guys some youtube specific content uh to kind of you know talk to you guys about all that all that kind of stuff show you guys what i'm doing i this is kind of where I can show you the actual builds I'd go, what characters are good, you know, kind of play-by-play -play stuff, what I'm doing, why I'm doing it. That's kind of going to be the goal of these videos. I'm going to try, try, and get out a YouTube video and a Twitch VOD onto YouTube each day. I'm going to do my best. I'll try and get two out for you guys whenever I can. Uh, but before we get into today's video, obviously, if you go on to enjoy the content, be sure to subscribe. Great. You guys are crazy in support. So you guys have been awesome. Uh, just keep keep doing what you're doing. Honestly, you don't got you guys don't need to change anything. Uh, second thing that I'll get into in here in just a minute, I'm going to show you guys the starting build. Let me go full screen. So this is Bellica. Uh, I am going to go into Epoch this game. This is probably the best starter for mages. At, like all around this is probably the best starter and i am going to go straight into azure core the reason i picked bellica this game is because they have a crunch and a severog and bellica's drone while it doesn't do that much damage late game if if you know if this game hits late game when crunch is spamming abilities like every half a second so is severog uh the damage adds up and Bellica's stun makes her actually a decent play into Crunch. So that, that's why I picked uh, Bellica this game. And we'll be seeing. We are up against a Gideon. Can try and be really annoying. If he goes Azure Core early, then our ult will be pretty good against him. But uh, yeah, as I was saying, sorry, this is, this is my one kind of question for you guys today is... I am getting close due to, due to you guys being, being nuts on the support. I am getting close to the point where I can potentially apply for Twitch partnership. Now, this is... It's big for a couple reasons, but for me, the big one is... When you apply for partnership, a lot of the time, you can change your username. They'll kind of kick inactive Twitch accounts, and uh, they'll let you take their inactive names. So my question is, would you guys... Do you guys have a preference if I change the channel name to just Pinzo? Or do you guys think it's fine as Pinzo Dunzo? I'm always curious what people think. Pinzo is a shorter name. You know, generally, that's kind of better. I'm just kind of curious what, what you guys think. This guy is just trying to poke me, and he's not doing anything. In mid, the first couple levels, the waves are pretty easy to clear. It's better to clear than it is to poke, in my opinion. Like, he he's trying to poke me by throwing abilities, and look at our health differential. You know, I'm full and he's half. So, it's I think it's much better to just kind of focus the wave on these first couple levels. He's going to do it again. We see the crunch. We saw him earlier in the solo lane. That's the only reason I went aggressive on the Gideon. I'm going to point put, gonna put points into my bomb. The drone is annoying early game, but until you have your ult, it doesn't do anything. Your drone's kind of useless. It does like 10 damage per <laughs> per ability that... Uh, uh, he, okay, he got me with one meteor. And I can be aggressive here. I have a stun, and I do a lot of damage. Like that. He just flashed. Did he just actually use his blink right there? Was that actually his blink? I, I kind of can't tell. Like, I think it was, but I also don't know why he would ever blink right there. I'm just going to scare him. That is one nice thing about when you can see that someone has an ability being aimed in this game, that you can scare people with them. Again, I'm going to not even put points into my drone here. Because I just don't really need it. It is important in mid to grab these river buffs. Because they give you a bunch of mana back. It allows you to be really aggressive. 
because you can keep using your abilities on the wave and on whoever you're against in lane. We get both of them here, so it means their jungler's not, not doing a whole lot either, because normally the jungler will get one side and the mid can get the other. But if I'm getting both, their jungler didn't get one. Also, yeah, don't stand in the wave. Like you can see, I'm, I'm way off to the side here. The, the reason for that is I don't want him to be able to hit me with a meteor and the wave. You want people to be, you want people to have to choose between poke and clear. Like that, like that. This guy needs, this guy needs to work a little bit on his Gideon accuracy, but that's all right. See, he, he can't poke me and clear the wave. He's got to choose. Which is good for us. Is he building... I don't know what he's building into. If he builds Azure Core first item, I would actually, because of Bellica's ultimate, I would almost recommend not building Azure Core first item if you're playing against Bellica. I think it's actually like kind of a downside because it makes you take so much more damage from her ultimate. If he portals back up, I'm going to kill him. Okay. I missed my stun and he got a green buff, both of which are going to stop me from killing him. That's super unfortunate. Uh, yeah, don't portal up as Gideon. Just run around. I do have my crunch coming in. He's not level 6. I am. I just realized I was level 6. I kind of forgot that I had my ultimate. Uh, Bellica ult is a lock on it does base damage and damage and the damage increases based on how low their mana is so you can see it does 150 base damage plus some scaling damage increases by 0.5 for each point of mana they're missing so if someone has 2000 mana and they're missing half of it your ult's doing an extra 500 damage and that scales up late game so you can see there we just see our crunch coming in behind him and even if my crunch doesn't crunch doesn't have cc until he gets his ultimate but even without that we're able to hit a stun and just make sure this gideon goes down and we're fairly safe like we obviously took some poke but that guy doesn't have a lot of kill potential on us and my team got a fang tooth that's pretty big I'm not going to be able to rotate for this, but I am going to fast clear. I would recommend not stunning the wave most of the time. Right here, I really want to rotate. So I'm trying to clear this a little faster. Yeah, you can see Gideon. Their whole team is over here. I need to be a little careful. I'm going to ward high. Because I'm not worried at too much about the river, but I want to know when the Gideon comes back to mid. Like that. So I'm going to act like I'm clearing, and then I'm going to turn on him. And see just how much damage you do. I'm a little bit ahead, but after that first back, after I recall once and get some items online, I just am going to start slapping. My ult is about to come back up. If I hit another stun on this guy, he might just be dead. Keep in mind, Bellica is also fairly good into Gideon. If he ever ults on the ground, you can kill him. Uh, generally, he's fairly safe. He just blinked in. Don't, don't, as Gideon, don't use your, don't use your teleport to get, to, to, to do that. <laughs> ever. <laughs> Not worth it. It's never going to be worth it. I didn't want to have to flash him there. Uh, we can, do you want to do baby prime? I don't know how I just pinged that tier one tower, but uh, I was going to say that me and Crunch could do baby prime. Don't don't blink into lane as Gideon. Don't don't use your thing. I'm going to go right into Wraith leggings next. Uh, this is a pretty powerful item. It has 15 flat penetration, which means I'm going to do a lot of damage to anyone who doesn't have tank items. This is kind of the build that I've been going. Gideon, I don't know what he's going into combustion, it looks like. 
but I have a full Azure core, so I should just destroy this guy, actually. I don't know why he's trying to poke me, actually. Like, he's just... He, he could have gotten most of those creeps, actually. If he just focused that wave, he wouldn't have missed most of those. Okay, we're just going to back up. Again, Crunch. Crunch is pretty strong right now. Uh, I don't have a drone, but I do have my maxed right click. So if you guys are unfamiliar with Bellica's passive, each time that you max out an ability each time you get five points in ability or three in your ults you get an additional effect on that ability okay this guy's back i have an ult like i can this guy has full mana but like okay that didn't do as much damage as i thought it might but i'm gonna make him run from me again i'm gonna stun this wave because I'm, I'm just gonna back I don't have any health pots. I made crunch back. Gideon's missing. I'm just going to recall. Oh, Decker showed up right at the end. Okay, maybe pay some more attention while you're backing. Maybe pay more attention while you're backing than I do. Azure Core is just so strong on Bellica. Your passive as well increases your maximum mana by 10%. When, uh, when you get a maxed ability. So my mana went up when I got my right click maxed just now. This is also, this syncs super well with the second passive on Azure Core, which gives you magical power based on your maximum mana. So I'm going to have a lot of power on this build. And Bellica's right click, her bomb, for some reason, I actually am not really sure why, it has 80% scaling on it when you get it maxed out its initial scaling is 60 percent but once you get it maxed it's 80 which is a lot that's a lot of scaling he just portaled again if he's gonna portal into lane i can be aggressive if i had my ult i might have kill potential but i don't at this point i'm going to pick up my drone after I've got my right click max, I'll pick up my drone here. It's good to be annoying, but it's really mostly a late game tool. I think that it's it's pretty pretty mediocre for the first half of the game. Need to be careful. They did just do baby prime, and they have a way into my lane. So I'm just gonna clear from range here. Your bomb's on such a short cooldown that you can pop pop it to down twice on every wave pretty easily. I'm assuming Crunch has has mini prime. Yeah, he's going into a mutilator as well. I think is probably the best first item for Crunch. Nice job from the duo lane. Well, from a gank into the duo lane, I guess. I don't know why this guy's running at me like this. I'm gonna see if I can... That, that's Narbash with Mini Prime. I really don't want to fight him. That's the thing. Is That's that's really strong. A, a crunch early game with Mini Prime is not really something you want to uh, fight with. So I'm just gonna back up. I don't know where he's at. I don't have a ward here. I'm gonna be careful. They should be on Fangtooth, to be honest which I don't think I can really contest. They're just on it now. Let's see, 30, 32 damage from the drone, you know. He's controlling these river buffs. Uh, they're just not really going to do anything for him. He got two green buffs, which is actually good. I'm just going to back. I don't really need to stick around. They just got a fang tooth. Their crunch is ginormous. So finding a way to shut him down would be huge. 
He has Phoenix and Mutilator, so he is really hard to kill right now. Like, for anyone on my team. My whole team might struggle to kill him. Okay. Now we're going to back. My duo lane shouldn't have pushed up when there's left. Their team is ju they're just kind of death balling. My duo lane shouldn't have pushed up. They should have just stayed back. We're going to go into the stasis or into the uh, epoch, like I said. This is going to give us a chance to uh, nullify Crunch's burst damage. I'm going to be able to epoch, and he's not going to be able to do anything to me. And even if he holds all of his abilities, the goal is that my team can do something while he is waiting on me if I'm his target. So it kind of it buys time as well as hopefully saves your life. Okay, I'm just trying to be annoying. He really wants these river buffs. Yeah, he's gonna run away. Oh, he's he's coming under. There's a guy right here. I'm trying to ping this because he's here and he's going to go in. Is my crunch my crunch just ate tower shots? Why? That tower's not even that low. Like you're not gonna kill that tower. He's one HP. Steel. Okay, my steel didn't go on him. He just he did just teleport and use his blink though. I thought my steel was gonna run at the Gideon. Like anyone else would run at the Gideon right there. Okay, I thought Murdoch was gonna follow that guy. I'm gonna flash out behind him here. If he fall I'm gonna kite him. He can't kill me fast enough for my stun to come up. So if I can stun him. I missed. That's bad. I'm not going to waste my epoch here because it's a long cooldown. I, I needed to hit my stun again. I think if I hit my stun, he actually dies. I just literally missed it. He didn't really juke. I just missed. My steel should have 100% killed the Gideon. I uh, was really close. You know, I left him on 1 HP. If I have my Wraith leggings finished, he's dead. I'm going to go right into Astral Catalyst this game. This is just a, a pretty crazy item. Gives you lots of ultimates, lots of CDR, period. My crunch is just not doing what their crunch is doing. That was good. That was good. You just have to keep playing the game after you jump through his portal. Nice. My crunch just... He got through the portal and then kind of stopped, stopped following. Okay, their crunch is just eating my duo lane alive. These guys are 1 in 7. He, uh, yeah, he's 4-0. and oh. He has Basilisk and Mutilator, so he doesn't have any defense. He has a decent amount of health from Phoenix, but doesn't have any defense. Which could allow us to kind of get some one sort of one-shots on him later in the game. Damn, dude. Steal, please, steal. No, no way he gets out, dude. Okay, nice job, steal. Good shit. Kill this guy. This is good because Fangtooth is just coming up. Killing that Crunch right now means he won't be alive. He'll be able to get here kind of for the fight for Fangtooth, but not right when Fangtooth comes up. Yeah, I kind of just missed that bomb on the wave. Don't worry. No, I didn't kill her ward. That's kind of unfortunate. I'm going to place down my drone here to just be annoying to this Murdoch. Okay, my Drongo is slapping. We should go Fangtooth right now. If we go Fangtooth right now, instead of chasing this Gideon, then the only person that can contest us is Crunch. As long as my... Okay, as long as my team comes over here... There's Gideon ultimate. My team is so split up. Three of my my three tanks are fighting a Severog. 
and my carry is fighting a Gideon. I just don't know why. Okay, Crunch is behind us. We see that because he's so far behind us. I'm just going to push up. I'm just going to go in. This is kind of a, a strat you can use to get past people playing super aggressive is just run, run past them. That was the worst bomb I've ever had. Okay, I don't know how that how that stun hit her that high, but got him. Okay, there's Crunch. We're gonna run away from Crunch. I'm gonna preemptively pop a health potion here. He just dashed at the. Why did he just go for my Narbash? I thought for sure he goes for me. We should get Fangtooth for free still. Should have given that to my Drongo. Uh, so you can see we do a lot of damage. Again, the crunch tunnel visioned really hard. Tunnel visioned really, really hard. When he does that, the best response that I have is to literally run into their team. Because it's the direction I can go to get away from crunch. When my whole team is going aggressive as well, it's actually pretty safe for me to follow my Narbash and follow my steel into the fight versus kind of running away and then I'm gonna get picked for being alone. Uh, my team gets a pick on Gideon in the middle lane. I have my whole Astral Catalyst off of that, which is crazy. I am going to go into Oath, uh, no, not into Oath Keeper. Where's Megacosm? Megacosm. We're gonna go into Megacosm this game again. This crunch has a lot of health, but no, he doesn't have any defense. So Megacosm does damage based on his max health. Is going to get some crazy value. Also, they have a Severog who just, you know, kind of naturally gets crazy amounts of health. Also very good against him. I'm going to ward that. I just want to know if they're coming. Whoa. Those minions went really high. I wouldn't normally clear these camps, but uh, I'm waiting for mid-wave to come up. Nothing was happening. I don't know why my Narbash just walked into the jungle alone. I don't know why my Steel is split pushing. But both of those things are happening. I have a ward, so I'm not scared of them behind me at the moment. My Steel is kind of just being AFK. I'm just going to... Okay. I'm going to run here. I don't. This is not a fight I want to take. I was just seeing if I could easily peel them off of him. I could not. Again, drone here in a place where they're not going to look at it is going to get a lot of value. That was a good ult. Because of that ult, I'm going to flash. Drone in a place where they don't look at it is going to get a lot of value. It's just going to be able to ping people down and they're not going to realize what they're taking damage from. Because it's just them using abilities. Dead. Nice. Drongo got a triple. I got one. Kind of stole a quadra. But killing Crunch is not really stealing a quadra. That guy needs to die. My Narbash is not... This guy picked support. Like, there were other roles open, and he we can't do this without Narbash. But there were other roles open, and this guy picked support. And he's not he's not playing very well. Not a great ward, but it's slightly better than actually having nothing. Okay, our crunch is here, so we've got this then. We just, we were, we were about 20 seconds late to this. You know, we could have had this done 20 seconds ago. We could, we could probably already have this tier two and left, which is where we should be going. My Drongo should not back right now, but he is. I'm going to back with Drongo. I'm going to call retreats. 
I don't know why my Drongo backed, but because he did, we, we should we should have all backed and bought items and grouped up. Again, if we were at prime on time right there, we could have gotten that tier two in left lane before they respawned. And then we could have backed with extra gold in our hand to get items. And then we could push down, you know, mid tier two or whatever we wanted to do. So it's little things like that where uh, you can you can make up a lot of time and a lot of uh, pressure that you kind of are losing if you don't make a play right when you have the opportunity. This guy should be dead. He should die. He should die. I just got both of them with that. I'm going to kill Gideon. I don't have a flash. I'm going to epoch. Bomb my feet. Team killed Crunch while I was in my epoch. Thank you, Drongo. Okay, my Drongo is popping. That is why you go epoch. Right there. I'm dead to Crunch before Drongo can kill him if I don't have epoch. So that was pretty big. Again, I got the double stun. The, the crunch kind of dashed into my stun while I was trying to get the Gideon out of his ultimate. So, uh... Stun this guy off of my Drongo. This guy doesn't do any damage, yeah. I don't know. My Drongo does a lot of damage, and that Sev does zero. I don't really know what that was. Minions push down an inhib, but it really shouldn't matter here. We should get two. And if their team does stuff like, damn it. I thought he, if he, if he doesn't backstep instantly, okay, that's bad. I'm going to bomb my feet in case he follows. Crunch, I don't want running at me. Anyone else is kind of okay. Oh, my son came up short. I was trying to peel him off of my Drongo. Okay, Decker does not want the smoke. That's all I'm going to say. Barely missed that stun. I thought she would have to go a little wider around that corner. Okay, this is kind of this is turning into a bad fight. I don't have my epoch. I don't have a lot of stuff here. Ulted the wrong person. That's really not good. Killed a crunch. If she if she uses more ability, she dies. Okay, uh, their crunch kind of screwed that fight by walking into my bomb and dying. So I don't really know what happened there. I don't have Mega Cosm, so I don't want to fight Severog. So I am going to back up. If I have Mega Cosm here, I take that fight every day. <laughs> I don't. So I'm just going to back up, grab my Mega Cosm. Final item, Caustica. This is the only percent penetration in the game. I think it's pretty necessary. Like it's it's pretty core in this build. Otherwise, you're just you're never going to kill a, uh, anyone with magical defense. I'm going to push out a wave or two here. We got another Fang Tooth. We're a couple Fang Tooths up now. So we will see exactly how this ends. We just Prime just wore off. You can see I'm kind of slapping. They're not focusing me super well. My Epoch is back up, which means even if they do focus me, I'm okay. That last fight, I ulted the... Uh, the the decker because she stepped in front of it when i went to ult the gideon it's kind of unfortunate my steel should leave he's he just ulted us he just up down ulted a severog uh while he's alone i also don't have any vision i'm gonna back up we saw their team in mid and now their team is not in mid i'm gonna throw another bomb and rotate to this you can see they're collapsing on my steel but they're also here in mid this crunch is really healthy, but my Drongo shreds him. That should be game. My steel goes down to that rotation, but it shouldn't matter. They should have either brought their whole team to steel or their whole team to us. They knew that we were in a 5v4 if we don't have steel. Otherwise, they should have gone and taken like a 5v1 against him. Watch this. No, I kind of thought that would do a lot more damage, actually. That hit for like 1,300. I kind of thought it would hit for like 2,000. Oh. Okay, 
Okay. That's just GG. Just a GG. <laughs> I was kind of baiting that guy. Just just for a little bit of fun at the end. Uh, that's Bellica. Bellica, I think, is really strong in the mid lane. I think she's really good. Uh, again, I think she's extra good into anyone's spamming abilities. So, like, Crunch, Sevrog. That drone damage, if it's hitting for 150 and it stays up for, you know, five seconds and Crunch uses five abilities, uh, 150, you know, that's 750 damage, you know, that's a, that's a lot to be hitting someone for with one ability. So, and it hits the whole team and it drains some mana, makes your ult a little more effective while it's out. It's, it's, a, it's a pretty strong ability and I would play her into team comps that want to spam. Other than that, let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Let me know what you guys want to see, all that kind of stuff. But that's all I've got for you guys today. So as always, I've been Pinzo. This video is done, Zo. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.